everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amelia and this is Amelia Budgets and thank you so much for tuning in. Here on my YouTube channel I post a variety of different budgeting related videos that is usually on Mondays, on Wednesdays, and again on Fridays. So if that is content that sounds like something that you may be interested in, I would love it if you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can get notified for when I post new videos. It really, really helps out my channel. So yeah, today I am filming my November budget setup. Um, so this video is coming quite a bit later in the month compared to when I normally post this video, um, just because I did take a slight break from YouTube for about two weeks. Um, I did post that like, I'm not gonna go into like a ton of the details about why I was off. Um, it was a lot, <laughs> there was a lot of different things going on during that time and I just, I had to take a little bit of time for myself, um, but it kind of threw off my <laughs> posting schedule because I do always plan like usually at least a month in advance, like when all of my videos are going to be posted. So this video was supposed to be posted like weeks ago, but obviously it's being posted pretty late. Um, and that's also too why this video is being posted on a Saturday. Again, I'm just trying to catch up so that I'm actually filming these videos all before the end of October. So anyways, these are actually my favorite videos to film every month, so let's get started. Uh, so the first thing that I always do in these budget vi budgeting videos is I list out my income. So again, I am a salaried employee. I get the same paycheck every other paycheck because one in paycheck does get an insurance taken out of it, but it means that on a monthly basis, I always get paid the same amount. So my estimated income for the month of November is the same as normal, which is $3,730. Um, next, the line that I have here is for YouTube. Um, I'm going to budget $0 for YouTube again, partially because like I did take that two week break. I wasn't even sure if I was going to get paid out in YouTube in October. Um, meaning that like the ads that I received in like the month of September, I wasn't sure if I was going to make the AdSense payout threshold then because I took a full week off in September. But because I did take full a two full weeks off in October. I don't really think I am going to hit that, but that's fine. It's going to be kind of cool because if I don't hit that, then I will get paid out like more money than I would have expected in the month of December. So anyways, it's just, it's my way of being a little bit happy about the fact that like, again, this is a little bit less, but that's fine. Um, again, I'm always very grateful for the money that I earn off of YouTube. Um, and then finally, I do list out an other line. Again, this is just sort of like a catch-all category for any other random income I might receive. So like in the month of October, there was a tax rebate for all Canadians. It was like a climate action incentive tax rebate. So that's going to be included in October, as well as a $10 promo from Tangerine, my, one of my credit cards, that would be included there. But I don't think I'm going to necessarily get anything for November. I normally don't. So I am just going to budget $0 for that. So if you add all of that up then, it gives me a total estimated income for the month of November at $3,730. All right, next I'm gonna move on to my fixed expenses. So again, my fixed expenses um, used to be things that were like bills. So even if it was a bill that fluctuated month to month, that's how I used to categorize a fixed expense. I don't really do that anymore. Basically a fixed expense to me is anything that I don't do a weekly check-in for. Um, and you'll kind of see that near the bottom where it's things that like, again, they're not fixed costs at the end of the day. If I couldn't do that, I wouldn't do it. But that's just basically how I'm differentiating between a fixed and a variable expense. So my first fixed expense that I have is my rent. Um, my rent is $1,200 a month, which is actually like very, very, very good for where I live in Southern Ontario. So that I know for some people might sound like a lot, but for me, it's actually like amazing. Um, next I have hydro. So hydro is electricity. I'm budgeting $70 for that because I basically always do. But to be perfectly honest, like I highly, highly doubt I'll be going at $70 in the month of November simply because um, this is electricity. So this is what cools my home. So obviously like in the month of October, like when I get have to pay that bill in November, October wasn't hot. So I wasn't having to use my air conditioning a lot. So I don't expect this to be the full $70, but I'm budgeting it just in case. Next, I have internet, and my internet is $60 a month. And then finally, I have my tenant's insurance, which is $25 a month. Again, I've said this in basically every single one of these videos, but these are it. That's it for my fixed expenses. Um, even though, like, again, where, I'm where I live right now in Southern Ontario, I have put on my heat 
um, the last like last week um, again I'm filming this video actually like the week before you're seeing it but I did put my heat on like the last week it wasn't as cool this weekend but it had been kind of chilly so heat and water are both included in my rent so I don't have to budget for them uh, the next bill that I have is my car insurance and my car insurance I'm budgeting $129 that did go up slightly in the month of October but not so much that I was like mad about it so I'm probably just gonna stay with that one set 129 and again for where I live that's actually like a very good rate so I'm not I'm not mad at that at all uh, next I have my phone bill and my phone bill is $59 a month again that phone bill is for um, I, fi I financed my phone at the beginning of last year so I have an iPhone 12 mini and then I also got a set of airpods and all of that is included in that $59 I don't actually include that phone um, in my like debt overview even though technically it is a debt and that was actually because my phone bill previously was only or sorry not was only was $57 and then when I was able to upgrade my phone I was able to get my new phone and airpods and everything and my phone bill only increased by two dollars a month so I didn't really think it was worth it to include that price because again I couldn't have gotten my phone plan at $59 um like basically I had like a lot of subsidies and stuff involved with that. So if I hadn't have financed it, I would have had to pay a lot more for my phone. So that's why I don't include that in my debt. Uh, next I have subscriptions and the only subscription that I pay for monthly right now is iCloud. So I budget $2 for that. Again, my iCloud subscription is actually like $1.46, but I do always round when I do these monthly budgets or when I do most of my budgets. The only time I ever use like cents is when I do my weekly check-ins. Uh, next I have my credit card minimums and I am budgeting $800 for that again back when I started my debt-free journey in the month of July of 2021 my actual credit card minimum was $400 so that was what my like minimum amount that I committed to paying until I was debt-free was I was able to up this when I started my new job in like um, April like I started my new job in March but I was able to up it in April so I tried out $750 in April and then in May I did up it to $800 so I did that in May and I did that as well as June July I had a really high month because I had a three paycheck month so I think I put like $2,000 towards my debt that month and then in August and September I did have to decrease it because I did um, go on vacation so I had to try to cash flow that vacation so I decreased it but I never stray lower than $400 a month when it comes to my credit cards uh, the next one that I have is my sinking funds and sinking funds I'm going back down to 300 again I had upped this to 600 in October because I had to sort of try and backfill certain sinking funds that I just again I didn't want to do that because I had a goal this year of spending no more than $1,800 on gifts in total but if I'm being realistic that's just not going to happen so I needed to backfill some sinking funds in the month of October so I can go back down to normal in November because that $600 sort of caught me up. Uh, next I have savings and savings I'm doing $80. Um, basically what I tried to do this year was every week I put $20 aside into like a savings envelope with my sinking funds and the goal basically for that money was that at the end of the year um, that would have been over $1,000 and I wanted to add that to my emergency fund because I wanted to try to get one full month ahead on my bills but I actually did use a good portion of this money for my vacation so I'm not going to have that thousand dollars by the end of the year but that's okay I have time and I can restart that in the new year for sure um, but I'm still going to continue to do that twenty dollars a week um, next I have nails so this how I did my nails right now I didn't actually do this I went to this like a salon and they just like did my nails like for me just like with regular polish and that's actually only $25 because it's $20 with then like a $5 tip so I kind of want to try and start doing that again because I just like honestly especially with the winter and just like with drier skin and everything I just like getting my nails done because I think it just like keeps my hands looking nice and then what I might end up doing is going and like getting my nails done getting her to like clean everything up and then I might come home and like put press on nails on but then honestly I think that this like looks so nice and like she did such a good job that I don't necessarily want to ruin it right away so I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do for that but because it's a lot less expensive to just get a manicure not to get like um, shellac or bio gel or uv gel or whatever it is 
um, I think I'm going to try to start working that into my budget. So, and by that, I'm like going to try and go every two weeks. So for my nails, I am budgeting $50 for the month of November. Um, and then finally, I have a different category that I haven't had before, and that is Black Friday. So for Black Friday, I'm actually going to allow myself $200 to spend on myself. So I didn't do that this year or last year, sorry. It was really the first year that I really, I bought myself a few things last year, but I really didn't buy myself very much. And although that's, it wasn't like bad that I did that, I kind of missed it throughout the year because honestly, even though I am Canadian, Black Friday sales are some of like the best deals you can get all year. So I do, I did really want to give myself a bit of extra money to buy some things during Black Friday. Um, again, I have a sinking fund for Black Friday, but I started it late and I really haven't been able to prioritize it. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. Um, and then basically like, again, I'm going to try to keep to around $200, but it's just going to kind of allow me to buy a couple things if I want them, I guess. And if I don't spend the full 200, that's fine. I just kind of want to give myself the ability to buy a few things um, for Black Friday. So yeah, that is it for my fixed expenses. And if you add all of this up, it actually gives me a total for my fixed expenses of $2,975. Um, so now onto my variable expenses. So again, my variable expenses are what I do my weekly check-ins for. Um, I am not a cash budgeter. I use my debit card for everything, but I still do my weekly spending check-ins. And that's honestly, I said this earlier in the week when I was talking about like my overspending that I've done over the past couple weeks do weekly check-ins or do like bi-weekly check-ins like for me I have to do it every week because honestly like if I don't I'm not fully aware of what I'm spending and even though there's definitely been times where like I've had a high spend week and like I've had the second week that was still like higher than I would have liked um, just basically knowing where my money is is very useful for me and it really does help a lot checking in on these categories on a regular basis so anyways my first variable expense is growth groceries and I budget $240 for that. That's just $60 a week, which has more or less been working out pretty well. Um, but sometimes I go over that, but I mean, as you all know, groceries are very expensive. So yeah, $240 is what I'm going to try to stick to. Dining out, I'm go still going to do $80. That's $20 a week. Again, that's down quite a bit, but I besides like the two week span that I was kind of like off and spending a bit more money than I normally do I think $80 is still fine especially because I am probably going to up that in the month of December because like I will be having like more like holiday type spending dining out ex experiences I guess I don't know so yeah $80 for dining out gas I am also doing $80 again that is not a lot of money for gas but I really don't drive very often anymore because I work from home like 99% of the time and then finally miscellaneous I'm still going to give myself $80 and again that's because I am including that $200 in this Black Friday category so like in total I'll have more miscellaneous money this month but just in terms of like my regular normal purchases which are usually like at the dollar store or shoppers drug mart and stuff I'm still giving myself $80 so if you add all of that up, it gives you a total of $480 for variable expenses. So now let's figure out my balance. So if you take my income, which is $3,730, so $3,730, and you subtract my fixed expenses, which is $2,975, so minus $2,975, and then you subtract my variable expenses, which is $480, minus $480, that gives me a total of... $275 left over at the end of the month. And I really am hoping that I can keep to that or even more than that because I would really like to be able to do at least $100 to my one month ahead savings binder. Um, I'm almost done, kind of. Um, I have like basically my saving, my one month ahead savings binder, I have my rent category. It has $1,000 in it, it needs 1,200. And then I also have a groceries and gas envelope that don't, don't, that don't have any money in it. But I would really, really like to be able to fill at least my rent category by the end of the year. And that would mean in November and December, I need to do $100 each there. 
but then I would also really like to see if I can get to over a thousand dollars put towards my credit card because I am getting very close now to being debt free like or, sorry to for being credit card debt free so you can see here that in October my tangerine credit card was sitting at a balance of two thousand six hundred dollars I'll be putting eight hundred dollars towards that card in October that will bring my balance down to below two thousand dollars again if i can put over a thousand dollars in november and over a thousand dollars in december i should still be able to pay that card off by the end of the year which would be really great because again i was kind of on track to do that naturally but then i did go on vacation i had to decrease the amount of money i was putting towards my debt but i still really want to figure out a way that i can actually be credit card debt free by the end of the year so again going into 2023 then that would mean i would only have my personal loans which is twelve thousand two hundred dollars so again if I can put just a thousand dollars a month towards my debt or just over which is, again is a lot of money especially like given like my income and like my what my fixed expenses are um, but I still think that's very possible especially because again there's going to be certain months where I have three paycheck months and then like extra income and all that kind of stuff so yeah I'm still overall I'm very happy with like how November hope I'm hoping November to play out um, again I'm really excited to be back on YouTube and again I'm really sorry that I took that extended break but yeah anyways that is it for today thank you again you guys so much for tuning in again my name is Amelia and this is Amelia Budgets um, my next video is going to be up tomorrow and that's going to be my November calendar setup so yeah I hope you all have an amazing day and I will talk to you again on Sunday goodbye everyone